So back then, you know, they're, the thermal physics that's developing and you're at, and we're asking the question, like, why do we have this entropy generation when we're trying to do work? You know, we have this generation of entropy that's not doing work. It's just, it's just, it's like a diffusion of energy. It's like, why is this happening? And so, so you start developing like this idea that entropy weight increases. And so people are asking, is that always true? Do we have a basis to, uh, to this idea and something that can be rationally explained? Mm-hmm. And so Boltzmann set out to do this. And so he tried to prove something called an H theorem, which was, which was the case that he was saying that there is a quantity H mm-hmm. such that if I have a container of gas, of particles, and I allow these things to just kind of interact freely, then there exists some quantity H that always increases. It never okay. decreases. And that would represent the arrow of time. Like this yeah. thing always increases. Okay. And so he, he set out to model this container of gas as spheres that are interacting with each other and, and, and bouncing off each other and interacting with each other. So he makes a bunch of assumptions. He makes a, a bunch of conditions, like the density of particles, how often they interact, the correlation between the particles. Like he makes all these assumptions to then write down a quantity called H and demonstrate that it always increases. Okay. Uh, but then this guy named Lockschmidt showed up and, uh, and made and argued against Boltzmann's result because in quant in class in, in physics, the equations of motion, the Newtonian equations of motion, Hamilton's equations, yeah. they are reversible. Okay. Okay. Meaning that meaning that I can take, I can take a process, like say I take a process where all the gas is contained in a corner and I allow it to evolve. And then and then say that after it diffuses and everything's all like nice and uniform, I stop the process and I reverse the momentum of everything. So I take all the momentum that I reverse everything. And then I allow the thing to evolve according to classical mechanics, then everything should reverse back and it should collapse back into the corner. Yeah, yeah. And so this is the problem of reversibility. And so uh, this is called the Lockschmidt paradox. And so Boltzmann had to respond to this because the because the argument is well if I have these assumptions and I think that there's this quantity H that evolves, well because of this reversibility there must exist a, a physical possibility of reversing all the momentum and it collapsing back in on itself. So, okay, yeah. so clearly the thing can't always yeah. increase; it has to be able to decrease. Uh-huh. That was Boltzmann's argument.